and welcome to this Dreamweaver tutorial. My name is Daniel Walter Scott and I'm a trainer here at Bring Your Own Laptop. Now if you want to follow along in the notes just below, there is a link to all the exercise files. Okay, otherwise um, check out our website um, for the class files so you can follow along. All right, um, so in the previous tutorial, we just had a quick look at what is a domain name and what is hosting. Now that you've signed up, you would have got an email. That email will give you details um, regarding how to set up what's called your FTP. It's the most common way of connecting your um, Dreamweaver files to your host so that the world can see your website. So um, we're going to work through that. Um, so let's uh, imagine you've got your email. I can't show you mine because you'll have all my details for my website and that's probably not good posting on YouTube. So um, have yours in front of you. Let's have a, and we'll talk through it. So um, to hook up Dreamweaver to your site, you go to site, you go to manage sites. Okay, we created one in the first video when we said setting up a website. Now you'll have a list in here. Now we've using this one here, example tutorial. I'm gonna double click that one. All right, and we've got some options. So the name and the local site folder, we did an early tutorial, but this is where it is stored on your computer. Okay, mine's there on my desktop. Okay, the site name is just purely for us um, as the designer, just to give it a title. The important bit is this thing called servers now. So where it says servers, hit this little plus button. Okay, this is where I'm gonna try and transcribe my details from my email into um, this part here now, and let's give it a go. Now, they're all the hosts in slightly different information. This can be probably the hardest bit to get set up. Okay, so um, let's let's go through it. So server name is totally up to us. So this is my, um, let's use digital Pacific hosting. Okay, that name doesn't need to be anything. You can call that whatever you like. So the connection we're using is ST, uh, FTP. Um, FTP address, this can be generally one of two things. It can be FTP dot uh, your domain dot com. Okay. Um, so your domain replace that with whatever you've called your website. Sometimes though it can just be your domain dot com. Sometimes it can be dub 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 dot your domain dot com. Sometimes um, when you've just set it up, it'll only work as an IP address. So um, it'll be one dot I can't remember what an IP address looks like, but it looked like a crazy number like that. So check your email, see if you can find some sort of address or FTP address. Unfortunately, there's not a really universal naming convention for this. So sometimes uh, some host people just call it the address or your website. Okay, so try a few different options in there. Now we're gonna do this one, uh, your domain, yourdomain.com. Now the username. Now, um, for different hosts, this will be generally pretty clear on your um, email that you get. It'll be your username. So um, this one's going to be Daniel Walter Scott. Generally, it's just a solid username like that. Sometimes it can look like an email, okay, at um, your domain. I'm being a little vague, I guess, in this one because there are so many different options of the hosting that you might have to try them all. So sometimes it's just that, okay, just your username, and then sometimes it's username plus your domain name. It looks like an email address. Password, okay, that'll come through as your um, in your email. I'm gonna put mine in. Okay, now the root directory, um, try it blank first. Okay, if blank doesn't work, it's generally something like public underscore um, HTML. Um, that's generally it, okay? Hit test on that one, see if it works. Um, um, when I say when it works, if you hit test and it says successfully connected to your server, you're done, okay? Job done. Um, so try it with nothing, hit test. If that doesn't work, try it with um, public underscore HTML. Sometimes, if you are splitting a host into little pieces, it'll need um, uh, your domain in there, okay? The name of the website or the folder that they've stuck it in for you. So um, check the email, it should, um, if it doesn't say anything, they probably don't need anything. Um, if, they, if that doesn't work, try public underscore HTML. Sometimes it needs the domain name as well. And um, this bit down here gets generated for you, don't sweat about that one. 
Okay, these little details create this one down the bottom, so don't sweat that option. That should work, hit test if it doesn't work, okay? Um, one of the main things is, um, let me show you, is playing around with these settings under more options. Generally for me, um, if I turn passive FTP off for a client, it can um, fix it up, um, and sometimes it doesn't. So it's um, try turning these ticks on and off, keep hitting test. If you can't get it to work, okay, you've paid for your hosting, um, and as part of that payment, you've paid for some sort of support. So don't be afraid to, my, my best option is to give them a call. So actually sit down. I know um, the, the phones can take a long time before you actually get through to someone, but it's so much easier when you get through to someone and just explain you're new to it, you're using Dreamweaver, have this up in front of you and get them to talk it through with you. Okay, and they can help. And if there's an error, they can fix it. If it's just you've got something mixed up, they can quite easily show you through it. I find email support can be mm, too tedious, especially when you're really new, because they say things that you're not too sure about just yet. So give them a call, um, help them fill out this form here until, and don't let them go off the phone until you can connect. Okay, you can hit test and connect to the server and it connects successfully. All right, um, that'll be it for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one.